Good, good. Wonderful. Now what I am going to do, um, I sent you the outline and then I, before we got together just now, I went back into the, um, the course, the lesson for this week and I realized that one of the discussions I have for this week has been duplicated because it was from last week. So I have to delete that and put in a new dis discussion. But all of this wouldn't make sense until I share my screen. But before I do share my screen, is there any general question that you have? Well, yes. <laughs> Uh, well, I sent you the questions I had. I don't know if you saw them um, because I kept going in so that I could uh, comment and yes, find Kavita's. Okay, okay. Let's go in. So the best way to answer the questions is always the best way is for us to literally go into the course. So I'm going to share my screen, and then we'll go into the course. Okay. Okay. Hey. Kavita, what time is it there? Are, are you talking to me? It's about yes. eight, uh, eight in the night, eight fifteen. Okay, okay. Wow. Isn't that something? Yeah, I'm finishing my day. You you were just starting your day. <laughs> okay, yes, that's right. <laughs> okay. So um I'm going into lesson one first. Okay, okay. So we could just see um the discussions. Okay. Okay, so there is meet your classmates. No, that one always takes me there, and that's not where I want to go. Okay. It's not a, okay, it's the one way it introduce yourselves. So, so we have that, and you have both introduced yourself. Kavita just did that. Yes. Okay. okay. You see? So she introduced uh -huh. And then we go to the next discussion, and I think, okay, let's see. I know you've both been in that one because I responded to you. The week one concept discussion. Okay. This is the one where you looked at the video, right. and then uh -huh. Uh -huh. you commented on... But I did not see hers at all when I went in there. You didn't see that when you went in? No. And this no. was there three uh, days ago. And I, and I checked I checked on Friday night before I went to bed. I said, well, let me check again. And I did not, it did not come up. Okay, so I, but it's there. Okay, so you see it yeah. now. I, uh -huh. I posted mine a little late, uh, Tara. I just misunderstood. I thought we were, we had time till Friday to post the discussion, but then I realized oh. it was Wednesday. So oh. I just... Oh. Okay, so okay, well, that's, I was thinking, what, am I, what did I do wrong? But okay, well, then fine. I mean, when I checked this Friday, I didn't uh -huh. see it. So, uh, okay, all right. Good, good. So we're on the same page. Wonderful. Okay, so your question, does it have to do with week one? Because we'll stay in the course as we go through the um, class. Well, that was, that was one of my questions. I didn't know where to find her post to comment, and uh -huh. so I didn't comment because I wasn't there for sure. you too. So that's good now. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I was um, encouraged by your response to the video. I hope you found it useful. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, so, yeah. And yeah. Uh, every yeah. week we'll be looking at a video. There's just so much, so uh, much in terms of resources, addressing, mentoring. So okay. um, we go forward. Okay, so I will go to lesson two now, which is this week's lesson. And we will look at... Okay. 
there is a PowerPoint presentation that we're going to go t- over to- together this morning. I mm-hmm. have an article, um, Women Entrepreneurs Need Mentors, which is a PDF. Um, the, 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 the discussion, there are two discussions this week, the importance of mentors for female entrepreneurs and women's mentoring programs. So I'm going to go into that for you to just see what the discussion um, question is. And of course, later you will respond to it. Um, but we'll start with the um, mentoring practices in the profession, the PowerPoint that is in the course. And you're free to print that out as or copy it, you know, save it as you see fit. Um, by now you probably recognize that um, in many of our professions, there are uh, formal mentoring programs to encourage women and to help them to navigate the context in which they are, and more so to encourage women so that they could be promoted to the upper levels of the profession. And these are intentional formal programs, and that's what we're going to be addressing in the PowerPoint. And I just, in terms of women entrepreneurs needing mentors, uh, that's an article, but I just want to mention I'm, I'm co teaching the research class, and in one of the, in, in that class, there is a, a, a woman whose interest is to look at. Why, she says, why um, Christian women are not becoming entrepreneurs? That was her beginning um, interest, research interest. So I said to her, I am teaching this course, and this course would help her to start to think more and understand the issue of women entrepreneurs. In fact, um, what she probably doesn't know, and I'll show her from the um, the statistics. There are increasing numbers of women who are becoming involved in their own businesses, starting up their own businesses. Now, as to how many of these women are Christians, I do not know. Um, and I, we would have to look at the data to see what is happening. But Kavita, you are an entrepreneur. Yeah, in some sense, yes. <laughs> I think in more senses than you realize. But as we go through the literature and you see who is an entrepreneur, how it's, um, that is defined, you are definitely an entrepreneur. There's no doubt about that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tara, any comments, questions on that before we yeah, start? I was going to say I can't agree with her. I know a lot of Christian women launch out into businesses, I think that the problem is is that they are um, not aware of best business practices. Yes. So they tend to operate as if they are, you know, they deal mostly with the people in their church or what have you, and they're not really doing business as business. So a lot of them start out, but they don't get far. So okay. Uh, one, one moment. Sure. And, you are, and take your phone so I can call and see where you are. Come on. Uh, hold on a minute. We're transitioning. Okay. Okay. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Yeah. So, um, so that's what I see as an issue is that they are going into business, but then this is where I think mentoring would go a long way because, like I said, they are not doing business as business so much as um, they are, you know, doing it like, you know, uh, at their church group or their friends. Then when they run out of those prospects, then that kind of kills it. Okay, so um, I, I think what I'm hearing you say, and I agree with you, that um, what these women need is the um, education 
training that would help them to really become successful as entrepreneurs. They need both the formal and informal um, education. They need mentoring. And then you're going to see there's another term that will come up here in this presentation, what is called sponsorship. So they need some of these, well, not some, all of these, so that they will become successful. Okay, thank and you. And I think so, also they need. I think also they need networking outside yes. of their circle. Yes, to expand their network, they need to expand their network. Yes. Okay, so I will go now to the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So in this presentation, we will review the research illustrating the breadth and depth of mentoring within certain professions. Earth science, public affairs, accounting, nonprofits, education, etc. These are just a few, to mention a few of the professions where there are formal mentoring programs specifically for women but also formal mentoring programs that address both men and women. But we are looking now at programs specifically for women. Okay? okay. And so I titled it Mentoring Practices in the Professions. And what, I, what this presentation is, a review, a summary of the research literature that addresses the issue. We start with the article on the Earth Science Women's Network. As you could well um, understand, Earth Science, the field of Earth Science is predominantly male. And because the field is predominantly male, there is um, such a need for women who wish to succeed in that field to come together, to give to support each other, and also to be mentored. Okay, so mm -hmm. that would be the background. The purpose of this, um, their mentoring program was to contribute to career development, and that's important. This mentoring, these mentoring programs are intentional in helping women to advance in their career. So the purpose is to contribute to career development by reducing the barriers for female atmospheric scientists. And then the purpose is seen as a means of reducing gender disparity in STEM. And mentoring is also seen as a component of career development. So these are three key purposes for the mentoring program in the Earth Science Women's Network called ESWN. It was established in 2002 by six early career atmospheric scientists. And now it has an international membership of 2,000 women in more than 50 countries. In 2014, it was established as a nonprofit organization. Um, I always like to look at the history of organizations because that helps you to understand their development, where they're com coming from, and you could learn from these organizations. Understanding the types of mentoring. Um, as I go along, if you want to stop and ask a question and make a comment, just let me know, please. Okay, understanding types of mentoring, and there are different types of mentoring. Um, we begin with the benefits of mentoring, mentoring as coach, coaching, mentoring as professional exposure, mentoring as protection, and mentoring as sponsorship. There's also mentoring for psychosocial development, for competence, for self-efficacy, for personal development. And there's mentoring for tangible and intangible benefits, increased promotion, higher incomes, more mobility, increased self-confidence, support, empathy, encouragement, counseling, friendship. These are some of the tangible and intangible benefits of mentoring. 
And I think as I recall your own um, introduction and comment in lesson one, I see mm -hmm. some of this being um, described by you. Understanding the types of mentoring, the forms of mentoring, there's formal and much of what we're looking at in this um, review of literature addresses formal mentoring. So there is, um, you are intentional, you have a specific program, you have a time frame, and you have established the outcomes that you would like to have as a result of the mentoring experience that is embodied in the formal process. Then there is one-to-one -one mentoring. There is multiple mentoring where you could have a single mentee who benefits from multiple mentors. Um, some people, and I think you both have maybe one, more than one mentor or have had in your life more than one mentor. So there, there is room for multiple mentoring. There is what is known as peer mentoring where you're working with people um, who share your position, values, etc., within the organization. Then there's what is called collective mentoring. One person may have, um, in, an, in a formal setting, within an organization, one mentor may have more than one mentee and may sometimes choose to meet with them as a group and then sometimes choose to meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, in terms of the process. There is collective mentoring institutional with a collective group of mentors accepting mentoring responsibilities. Just as how you may have one mentor working with a number of mentees, you may have in some of these organizations, not just one person, but more than one person who is assigned as a mentor to individuals within the organization. And what you have then is that, that these mentors have a relationship and they meet together to process their experience, to share what they're doing, etc. And they may also have a formal program that they all share so that they're working together intentionally and on agreed upon outcome, outcomes. The mentoring philosophy of the ESWN, there are five principles. Um, support community-driven mentoring. Encourage diverse mentoring approaches for diverse individuals. And that makes sense. Um, when you're mentoring, mentoring is an intensely personal relationship. You have to be sensitive and aware. So you cannot assume that one method or one approach will work for everyone. You have to be ready. To, you have to be responsive to your mentee. And you always have to have that awareness built into you. Even when you're working with a set program, you still have to be aware enough to be responsive to your mentee. Um, facilitate mentoring across career phases. Promote combined personal and professional mentoring. Champion effective mentoring in a safe place. Um, now we're, we're looking specifically at the Earth Science Women's Network, but that mm -hmm. goes for other groups. Um, for example, um, two of my sisters are nurses. One of them, um, among her responsibilities, she has mentored several nurses in her workplace the, and in, in, the, in programs that are intentional. And um, her workplace has a formal, well-structured mentoring program for their nurses. And um, over the many years of her serving, she has mentored dozens of um, younger persons in the field of mentoring. I mean, in the field of nursing, and that is so important. Um, the execution of the ESWN and mentoring philosophy. Among other things, they use online forum discussions. They have in-person networking events at national meetings and workshops. Remember, um, we talked about Tara mentioned the need for networking. Personal relationships and connections are strengthened 
by face-to-face -face contacts <clears throat> and can lead to more worthwhile and meaningful experiences for members. There are also professional development workshops. So all of these are some ways in which mentoring takes place within a professional organization. There's not one set method. I'll stop here for question or comment. Um, I just, uh, it's just an observation, it's not a question, but uh, I somehow feel or I have experienced that a group sort of mentoring works better because um, you get input from, you know, uh, different people and you get different perspectives and also the, you know, the aspect of depending on, on just one person, like even Tara mentioned, becoming dependent is kind of reduced. Um, at the same time, the mentoring experience becomes richer when you have more than one mentor. It's just an observation. I mean, just a comment. Yes. And I think that's an observation that, that I would agree with. And um, again, the in terms of the process of mentoring, mm -hmm. is that awareness of the client, the person or persons who are part of the, the, the process. So um, where, where mentoring is going to be beneficial uh, in terms of a group process, then you certainly want to have that. And where it's going to be beneficial in terms of having more than one person at one time or two mentors working together with a group, that makes sense too. Um, and uh, another, I mean, I just had a question also about the whole process or the difference between mentoring and coaching. You know, coaching is like the big uh, word today and everybody's talking about coaching. Everybody needs a coach. You need a coach. And so, <laughs> you know, um, so, and, and kind of they define mentoring as different and coaching as different. So what are your uh, thoughts? Uh, you know, how is this mentoring that you're talking? Because I'm, I just saw... Uh, coaching also coming into one of those um, bullet points sure. that you just showed us. Yeah, so sure. I'm just wondering if yeah, we're going to be talking about coaching as well here. I, I just wanted to know. So. Okay. Yes, I'm aware of, and we're going to see it over and over in the literature. Um, okay. I'm aware of the fact that coaching is used sometimes interchangeably, sometimes mm -hmm. defined differently. But yeah. I would say that the two are related, mentoring and coaching. I definitely would say that they're related. And mm -hmm. um, I would not um, necessarily separate them, but you'll see them being mentioned in the literature. And that's a good um, question. Another word that is mentioned alongside them is sponsorship. And in this mm -hmm. presentation, we look at the issue of sponsorship. Then there's professional development workshops. Um, and this is from the ESWN article, the final thoughts for, bro for the broader community. It says, encourage women and minorities to seek out multiple avenues of mentoring early in their careers and at new career stages. That is so very important. And um, that responsibility falls on the individual depending on the um profession that you're in mm -hmm. and i am thinking of natalia welcome she's heard me um yes but the the whole um issue of the individual taking responsibility to make sure that he or she gets mentoring is important. Yes, Tara, you were going to say something? Yes, one of the things that um, when it says, you know, seek out mentoring early in the career, one of the things that I have found in ministry that it was just near impossible and it being gender related, the, the, the men always had mentors in the pastors. Mm -hmm. um, anytime there was a visiting pastor or whatever, they would collect. And of course, they're talking, they're sharing, and it was not, it would not be appropriate, of course, being, you know, the only woman or one of the only women to go and enter into those meetings. But at the same time, I'm saying, wait a minute, I need that same information. Mm -hmm. So if you 
thing necessary to kind of um, go in the other way, you know, just kind of, you know, latch hold of someone and say, well, what about this? What about that? Um, another uh, wonderful mentor that I've had, uh, Dr. Robert Smith, who is um, a professor uh, at uh, Beeson, the School of Divinity. And he's been a wonderful source of information that I can call and say, I don't, I don't know about this. What about this? How do I find that? Um, and even to talk to him on occasion face to face. Um, but, you know, the good thing about that is he didn't have any, it wasn't like I was in his church. So he was free to talk to me, give me whatever information, uh, even, even give me some uh, behind the scenes male stuff that mm -hmm. you know uh, so that I could understand it but in the church with women ministers finding a mentor is very very difficult very difficult okay Tara you're uh, going okay. ahead. you're getting ahead of me there's a whole <laughs> session there's a whole uh, there's a lesson that we're going to be looking at that on I'm so, I'm really <laughs> I'm really happy you spoke about it Tara because that is something that I have experienced and in fact I'm still experiencing it because um, you know my both my husband and I both are in ministry and, and you know and his um, platform to network or opportunities to be mentored is like way out somewhere and for me like I have to intentionally seek and fight and go and find you know what I need and, and I've really struggled even through my ministry and through my work I haven't really had um, uh, you know that many mentors in that sense i've had well meaning people help me support me but in terms of networking opportunities and mentoring i have always struggled and i still struggle <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and you okay. know and that's why it's important on this side of it uh at this point in my life i i'm i always try to encourage young women ministers mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i know the struggles that i've had Yes. Um, and, and, and even in um, uh, uh, areas, even in, like I said, I was in broadcasting, when I see a young, bro young woman who was just getting into broadcasting, I would make contact and say, hey, is there something I can do? Yeah. If there's questions you need, whatever the case may be, you know, here I am. Uh, because of the places that I've been, it's like I've always kind of been out in front, but there was nobody in front of me to get me where I needed to go. So I've had to learn as I go along. So I'm going to get off of it since I know you were going there eventually. And I, I hold, I I hold <laughs> this on that. But thank you for raising it. Okay. Um, it says here, we need to recognize that some issues may be gender specific. That's why we're looking at mentoring specifically in the context of women in the professions. Recognize that the perception of the viable role models and mentors for women and other minorities may differ. And individuals do not have to mentor on all aspects of their careers. So those are some um, key points to remember. Mentoring in higher education, and that's my area, and um, the article addressed this. In um, the abstract of the article, it says, this article reviews existing research on mentoring in higher education and develops a conceptual framework that captures a theory of change regarding expectations about the impact of mentoring on faculty career development and scholarly productivity. We surveyed faculty in the U.S. public affairs programs to learn about individual and institutional experiences with mentoring and the mentoring programs. We found a prevalence of informal and formal mentoring. Um, that is in, in the context of higher education. What are the findings that um, they highlighted? And here I just wanted us to be aware of this definition in our text they are definition but they define mentoring as a reciprocal learning relationship and i like that term reciprocal uh, characterized by trust respect and commitment in which a mentor supports the professional and personal development of another the mentee by sharing his or her life experiences influence and expertise I, and i like this um definition a reciprocal learning relationship 
characterized by trust, respect, and commitment. These are very important value components in, um, in mentoring. Mentoring is based on trust. Um, and if at any time uh, trust is not reciprocated or is broken, that may signal the break of the mentoring relationship too. Trust, respect, commitment. Um, in my own life, I've had several, both young men and young women asking me to share, um, to be their mentors. One young woman in particular, I, uh, who is currently doing her PhD at another institution, she actually wrote me a formal letter most times the, the response, the request would be oral, but she wrote me a formal letter and identified, and I, that was excellent. She identified the areas in which she needed to be mentored, um, areas of weaknesses that she um, know, knew that she needed to address, especially since she's currently in a doctoral program. And, um, and she took the initiative to find um, some of the answers and then we discuss together. One of the areas that she identified as an area of weakness for herself was the whole area of critical thinking. And I really um, commend her for the initiative she took to, to do the research and learn more about critical thinking. And then we share that and um, I gave her feedback, et cetera. Now that is an example of a formal relationship, but it came out of a, a relationship of friendship, trust, and respect, because I have had her as a student in the past. And um, so out of that, she made the formal request. Mentoring is helpful for teaching, research, and career planning, especially in the, in the field of academia, but in any field. Mentoring as a forum of support to help faculty develop competencies and work relationships to build their careers. And also um, schools and universities recognize that mentoring contributes to faculty retention. So in most um, colleges and universities, there is a, a formal mentoring program for new faculty. When you join the faculty, uh, you are mentored at least for one year by a senior faculty member. And part of that, um, one of the reasons for that is that they want to retain you, retain your services rather than have faculty come and serve for one year and then move on to another school. That's, um, that's not a good use of resources and time. And it takes time for faculty to learn the culture of an institution, um, its, its staff, its faculty, its students, etc. So you want to invest in uh, people who would have a long-term commitment to your institution. So in this um, study, they asked the following research questions. In what contact contexts are faculty mentoring programs more likely to be effective? For which faculty is mentoring most useful? What characteristics of mentors and mentees are viewed as important in ensuring good mentoring relationships? Those are good questions that can be asked in any context, not just about faculty, but mentoring in any context. Um, the benefits of mentoring. Oh, I'm sorry. Prior to the research, it showed that, the that there are, these are the following benefits of mentoring. It facilitates the recruitment, retention, and advancement of faculty. It socializes proteges into an academic unit's culture. Every academic unit has its own culture. The education um, department in a college is different from the science department, is different from the business school, is different from the music department. Every unit has its own culture. 
uh, it increases collegiality and the building of relationships and networks among proteges and mentors. It promotes professional growth and career development for proteges and mentors. The proposed theory of change model for faculty mentoring. Um, there are institutional factors for the organizational context. There's the question of leadership support. There's a question of adequate mentor training, the provision of clear expectations, and the provision of rewards for mentors. And um, that last is important. Mentoring is a two-way relationship. It's a reciprocal relationship so that the mentor benefits as much as the mentee, especially when the program is a formal program. And there are rewards for mentoring um, for the mentors, right? Adequate mentor training. Um, you don't just jump in to a formal mentoring situation. There is always a formal program that you need to go through before you start the formal mentoring process. And even for those of us who are informal mentors, we educate ourselves and are responsible for developing ourselves because if we're going to um, give value to the mentee, then we ourselves have to be growing and developing persons. So that um, responsibility is upon the mentor to do his or her own growth and development. Um, customized mentoring programs, attention to mediating factors and the traits of mentors, willingness and availability. These are all some important variables in looking at mentoring in the context of faculty. I could stop here if you want to ask question or make comment. Okay. What they found. Uh, mentees found the following support from mentors most valuable. Information on how to navigate the university system. Advice on professional advancement and visibility constructive feedback and collaboration. Again, these are not necessarily unique to a university system, but within the context of a university system, the mentees found that they needed to have information on how to navigate within their own university. They needed advice on professional advancement and they needed constructive feedback and collaboration. Implications. Uh, there needs to be visible and authentic support from the highest level in terms of faculty mentoring. So the dean of the department, for example, as a faculty, you are within a certain department. There isn't going to be a mentor in the mentoring program has to be signed off on by the dean of the department. If not, it's not going to be going anywhere. That, that the dean is the head of that department. So that person has to be a part of the program. The person may not be involved hands-on, but they have to give permission for the program. They're responsible for developing the formal training. And they would also be one of the persons to whom you have to be accountable for what you are doing. So as a mentor, you're accountable not only to the mentee, but to the department under which you are doing the mentoring. Uh, the need for objectives and protocols for monitoring and evaluating mentoring programs. And that's important. Notice monitor, monitoring and evaluating. So once it's formal, there's a structure to it. You have to be overseeing it and you certainly want to and we'll have to evaluate the program the mechanism the mechanism for reporting when not working no it is it does happen sometimes human relationship and other things being part of that process that you may have on paper a formal mentoring program but in practice 
that program isn't working because the mentor and the mentee are not meeting. Ultimately, the success of the program hinges on a relationship, a working relationship, a regular relationship between the mentor and the mentee. So sometimes as a faculty person, your mentor meets with you at the beginning of the year and then there's nothing else. Tara, go ahead. And that's what I was going to say, that relationship, because I, at the school that I work, we have a mentoring program. But the only time that you see the mentors is when they're doing their, what they call their walkthrough. Uh, they come and sit in your class for about mm, 10 minutes, observe what's going on, then they send, uh, they email the uh, feedback, and that's it. I mean, you you don't really have, there's no one-on-one -on -one time where they come and just sit with you. There's a meeting once a week where all of the, the staff in a particular area get together and they go over some practices or whatever, but there's no, um, there's no relationship. And I keep seeing that word on here. There's no relationship. So they don't know you, you don't know their, where they're coming from, you don't know their strengths, and it seems to be more about just giving, giving us um, the protocol of the district, just giving us the, this is what we need to do to get to the next point, that next, next uh, um, achievement for our school overall, but as far as a as as what I would consider to be mentoring, uh, they don't know anything about me. We've been we're eight weeks now into the year. They don't know anything about me. I don't know anything about them. I see them when they walk through. They don't say anything. They come in. They sit down. Ten minutes. They're gone. And then you see something online. And, and to me, that's not mentoring. That's, no, I agree I with you. Really, yeah, I don't see that as as. And then mostly because the other teachers have mentioned, it just feels intrusive. Uh, you know, I'm busy. I don't have time to, you know, and if I know, I'm, of course, we never know what, when they're coming. So, okay, fine. You come in, you observe something, but you don't observe the totality of what we're doing. You mm -hmm. just observe what you see for that 10 minutes. Then you write a review based on that. So it gets to where you almost feel adversarial, like, okay, you're just here to see what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. so I, right, I there's, a, there's a problem there. No, that is that just is not mentoring. Um, they probably want to use another word to describe that. But you're right because mentoring, the key element to mentoring is relationship. Um, that is a process that is set up to, as you say, fulfill the the administrative uh, responsibility. And so you say on paper, this has happened, but it is just on paper. Nothing else has happened. And that is pretty unfortunate because what mentoring is not an adversarial relationship. And if it becomes adversarial, then you have to stop and ask what is happening. You know, and that that you just described is a, a recipe for disaster <laughs> in terms of relationships, etc. That is something else. It certainly is not mentoring. Um, and here from this research, they said mentoring relationship should be kept separate from promotion and tenure processes. And this is within the university. And this, this, I found this piece interesting and informative in the sense that, um, and that it's important what you don't, the message you don't want to send in the college setting is that um, if you have experienced mentoring, that that will automatically lead to promotion. It's not for that purpose. Not for that purpose. It may feed into promotion because depending on the quality of the mentoring relationship, your mentor may give you feedback, give you information, and here I now use the word coach, coach you for the purpose of promotion. But the, but the, 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 the purpose of the mentoring program that has been established is not, it's not going to automatically lead to promotion. So they don't want to feed, to, to mislead you into that. Now, um, 
usually on a faculty level, that mentoring relationship is, um, I use the word mandatory in the sense that you, ha you sign off and you commit to it. And you as the new faculty being mentored, you have to meet with your mentor. But um, my own experience is, is that you usually you step back and expect the mentor to take the initiative to contact you or meet with you. Depending on that person, they may or they may not meet with you. So then you have to, for your, for the, for your own good, take the initiative to meet with a person if they don't do that. There again, the whole issue of relationship. Because if you are confident about your teaching and how, um, and how successful you are, you may decide, well, I don't really need a mentor. So if the person doesn't get in touch with me, I will not get in touch with them. And then you end up having a situation like what Tara just described, albeit there isn't anything happening. You've had a formal meeting and you've said, well, this is my mentor. And maybe at the end of the school year, you meet again, but then you really haven't done mentoring. You just have it on paper. Okay. The, the third article that we're going to look at is mentoring and sponsorship in career development. And this is one of the um, reasons why we have mentoring in the, the professions for career advancement and development. This was a pilot study to see how women leaders distinguish sponsorship and mentoring in their career development. The goal of mentoring is change in behavior. Sponsorship is to prepare one to be ready and persuade leaders to seek capabilities of the protege. So the sponsorship is more focused on the result, on a result that is beneficial to the mentee. The goal of mentoring is to change behavior, whatever behaviors um, you, you will address and you want to see change, but sponsorship is more focused. Okay. In this, this was a qualitative study using two focus groups, um, interviews of women between the ages of 20 and 75 years. And there were women who were involved in business, for example, their titles included vice president, CEO of a nonprofit organization, judge, accountant partner, director, executive secretary. So we would say that these are successful high level women in their um, fields. The career fields were accounting, investment, insurance, academics, health system, the judiciary, and nonprofits. So these were the contexts in which the women function. The research questions, do women in leadership roles distinguish between the concepts of mentoring and sponsorship in their daily work? To what extent do these acknowledged leaders perceive they have received mentorship or sponsorship? Is there an understanding of the strategic difference between mentoring and sponsoring in career development? How does sponsoring ha happen? So these were the three um, research questions, I think, three of them, yes. What were the findings? The women listed the following characteristics of mentoring. A commitment to a whole long-term process. An ongoing relationship whereby one talks about the mentee's goals and suggests ways to get there and how that path may go. Helping somebody to get their confidence back or to gain it in the first place. Um, the responses address finding a mentor, unconscious mentoring, friction in mentoring, payback in mentoring, outgrowing a mentor, the costs of mentoring, sponsoring and the act of sponsoring, this despo sponsoring and payback with sponsoring. 
So these were the major issues the research addressed. What were the conclusions? They said that companies should offer opportunities for interaction with other levels and units of the organization. So oftentimes um, in, in large companies, in colleges and universities, your relationships are uh, limited to one department or one section. But this study suggests that you should have opportunity to interact with people from other departments and from other levels. Work with colleagues, Work with or colleagues. colleges and universities to recruit interns as an avenue to finding employees and encouraging early mentor mentee relationships. Mentoring may or may not develop as a sponsoring relationship. So what they're saying is that sponsoring comes out of mentoring. When you mentor a person and you feel confident that this person is likely to succeed in their professional field or within their organization, then you may change your relationship to that of sponsorship where you are, as it were, um, championing the person to move them into a position uh, of some position that they may want or even a promotion. The sponsoring uh, process should be more deliberately nurtured to increase women's success. So those were some of the findings. And then what I've listed and I do with my PowerPoint and you can, um, these are, are um, articles that are listed on, on, on the, in the reading list and you could go back and read them for yourselves. These are the sources that I use for this presentation. Questions, comments. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm good. I think I may have more questions after I read the articles, but yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, sure. And you can feel free to do that. Okay. Tara, any from you? No, no, I was saying the same thing that um, uh, thus far I'm, uh, I'm clear. Um, once we, once so I go back and read and do my other reading, I may have some things then. Sure, sure. And you can always do that in the discussion. I use the dashboard to raise those questions because the discussions are specific to the discussions. Now, let me go to um, week two to just pull up for you what you will be doing. Um, the discussion the importance of mentors for female entrepreneurs. You're going to watch the YouTube presentation and then you're going to read the article that I showed you that is in the course, Women Entrepreneurs Need Mentors. So you watch the video, read the article, and then identify the similarities and differences between the uh, video presentation and the reading, etc. So that's the discussion one. Then let me take you to the next discussion, discussion two. And that one I'm just building because I realized that I had duplicated it. But I'll tell you this. It's, um, there's a video, Women's Mentoring Program, and I'm going to put up the video. You're going to watch that video, and you're going to state how these women's stories match what you have seen in the readings, for example, in the PowerPoint presentation, and in other readings that you would do for this week, uh, state how their stories match what you will find in other literature. Okay. Questions or comments? No, nope, that's clear. Pardon? It's, it's clear. So we I need to know that's them. clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then just one more thing I just want to bring your attention. The book review. You're going to choose one of the books from the reading list okay. and you will do that review. So there are six um, books. Um, I will just let you choose which one gets your interest first and you review it and then submit it. Um, this first literature review 
I will give you feedback, but I will not necessarily grade it. So I will give you feedback so that the next one you will um, do, see an improvement. Now, I just want to show you from the log, there, is a, there are a set of rubrics that I use for the different assignments. And I would advise that you look at the rubric for the book report. Let me just. I know. And if I don't pull it up here, I'm going to send it to you. Okay. Okay. What is the rubric? Okay. I don't see it here. So I'm going to send you that and then I'm going to put it in. I see the rubric for the major paper. This one is there. But let me put in the rubric for the um, book report. I'll put it in and I'll send it to you directly so you will see what you okay. will be evaluated on. Okay. Any other question? None for me. Okay. Okay. Kavita? I'm, I'm good, Clarence. Um, sure. Okay, wonderful. Well, it's been good meeting you again this week. You've raised some valid observations, etc. And uh, what I want to say that both of you have such a wealth of experience that you are going to find this course meaningful and I will be learning from you too. So thank you and have a good week. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless. Okay. Thank bye -bye. you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bless you too. Okay. okay.